do you condemn Hamas? Even if I say I'm against Israel, so what? A lot of people say I'm against America. A lot of people say I'm against the UK. A lot of people say I'm against Saudi Arabia, Egypt, UAE. So yeah. what? I'm anti-Trump and anti the Biden. I can say whatever I want about the American president and I cannot speak about Israel. What is your opinion of people like Andrew Tate and what they spread? It's a very problematic character. A lot of people say, oh, he's, accus he's been framed for accusations. Forget about the accusation. The way that he speaks about women is very misogynic and it's very disrespectful. Even if it's not 100% true. Whatever, even if that's the case, he knows that when he say that, he will be judged. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so today we have a very special podcast. We got to sit down with Bassem Youssef, talk about Palestine and Israel, what's going on in the world, and much more. But before the podcast starts, guys, if you're new on the channel, please hit the subscribe button and like this video because it's going to support us a lot. And I'll continue trying to bring you guys the biggest guests I can. That's all I want you guys to do before this episode starts. But without further ado, this is Bassem Youssef. Welcome, Welcome to, to the Vibe Show. show. Welcome to the Vibe Show. <laughs> Bassem Youssef, round of applause. This is going to be a good episode. I can't lie. I was very nervous um, having you on the podcast. And I, I don't really ever get nervous. You know, I've had a I lot mean, of... I with a silver head like that, why would you? I don't know. <laughs> um, but this is a big episode. Thank you so much. Thank I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. So let's get straight into this. Mm. Wow, can... that's too many questions. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like a deck I of know. cards. It's like, <laughs> no, we can do this. No, 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 no. Uh, I didn't mess it up. I didn't mess it up. I didn't mess it up. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, first of all, how are you doing? Oh, that, that, did you actually need a card for that? <laughs> how, how are you doing? How's life? Uh, I am good. Next uh, question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I want to say, um, past few months has been crazy for you. Um, how's, yeah. how's life changed? Well, I, I my shows have expanded. Like the my, my tour has expanded. I've been traveling a lot. I've been there's a lot of more demand now on me, which is uh, a blessing, alhamdulillah. Like and it's it it comes with its own kind of pressures, all kind of expectations. And as much as people look from the outside and you, they see the big life, yeah. It comes with a lot of anxiety and a lot of insecurities and a lot of, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, the fact that like you're not sure the 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 uh, the fear of failing, the fear of not ma making up, the fear of not rising up to people's expectations. That that's that's always a constant fear. Because I feel like you have a lot of pressure on you now. Like you are in a way kind of like the spokesman of the Middle uh, East. Don't say now. that. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't say that. That's yeah. a lot of pressure. No, yeah, it's all. It's always been. And the thing is, like, it, uh, uh, you know, when I said in people, I've seen this movie before. I've seen this movie before because uh, in Egypt, like some some people just started to know me in the past few months because of what happened in Palestine. Time, but uh, 10, uh, 12, 13 years ago, I was uh, I was having my own show in Egypt, and suddenly people were like, "Oh, you're the spokesman of the Egyptian revolution. You're the spokesman of the youth." It's like I'm not, and I, I kept saying I'm not. I kept saying I'm not. I'm just a comedian. I do, I do satire. I just speak my mind. And at a certain point, when you cannot uh, continue for whatever reason, safety, fear, whatever, people get let down. It's like you let us down. You're a sellout. You're a coward, and you can see that kind of. Uh, 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 yeah. love turned into hate overnight it's it's crazy so and this is the problem with people putting people or uh, iconizing people i always talk about the idea of iconizing yeah. individuals because at the end of the day you're a human you yeah. have your limitation but people are so frustrated so they put so much pressure so much expectation on you and at a certain point you, you, you cannot you, you, ca you, you cannot rise up to every expectation you can't especially in this uh, issue that we're talking about right now it's it's been like 75 years of failure yeah uh, people that you, could, you can't expect that i'm come and do and 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 do something different i just speak up and and for people are are happy that like they they they, they see their minds be the, the the thoughts in their minds being materialized but this is this is as much as i can do i can only speak yeah and then yeah. i certainly there's people like i, I remember from somebody like dm me it's like well what what do what, like you what, what do you think you did you're like the palestine is still occupied it's like what do you expect <laughs> oh, me to do? Yeah, well, i mean you're only do? one guy at the end of the day what, what can I do? Yeah. I mean, there there is only much you can do. Yeah. And the, and the thing is, and this is, I think like you being an online personality, yeah. you get a lot of that. You get a lot of hate, a lot of trolling. People just like have so much frustration, and you because now online make everybody very like one comment about. We come the boxing bags. Yeah, online. you 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 just like yeah. people people just like put all of their frustration, yeah. all of their anger at you, and you you as you said, you become a punching bag, and yeah. it's 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 not really I. I I, I'm doing my part, and the thing is, like, you never win. You don't yeah. speak up. 
you're a coward. You speak up, you di- haven't spoken enough. You spoke enough, you're doing this for clouts and clicks. Yeah. So, so, so whatever I, 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 you do, you, you never, never win. So yeah. this, is, this is the idea, this is the problem. That's why I'm trying to learn to, to separate myself from that kind of thing. You do it for yourself, you don't do it. And, and I try to isolate myself from uh, the, the, the commotion on the internet. It really, it, it really gets to you. Now, before we get onto that, first things first, Basim is doing one of his biggest comedy shows here in Abu Dhabi. In my life! 5,000 people. So if you're watching this, guys, and you have the chance to come to Abu Dhabi. Yes, Arena, in the Yes Island Arena, 24th of May. Me and, me and Mas Gibrani, they get like actually two comedians for the price of one. So guys, don't miss it. But today we have a lot of things to talk about. Oh yeah, we do. I thought I was just gonna do the this announcement and leave. This is gonna be a very interesting <sighs> podcast. <laughs> I, I don't take it easy on anyone. Okay. I want to... All right, let's get to it. I actually want to know more about you. Who is Bassam? How did you grow up? What was your childhood like? I was born in Cairo, a middle-class family. My dad was a judge. My mom was a pro- university professor. Uh, it was, a, you know, a, a typical Egyptian middle-class family where... Uh, they only have their salaries. I didn't come from money. I wouldn't like the, the idea of like having, I mean, we were having, we had a decent life, good education. And my, my parents had all of their money put in our education. So in 1986, as I was, I finished my uh, uh, elementary school going to middle school. This was the beginning of the whole wave of international schools opening in Egypt. And I'll tell you how expensive it was, 1986, the fee was 5,000 Egyptian pounds, which at the time, time about like $1,300. And that's a lot for back then. 1986, $1,000 mm. a year for a year for a school year. That's crazy. And they paid that for you. And that paid, and, that, and I saw them like kind of struggling to make the, the money because for them, it, it's, it's like in, in middle, middle class in Egypt, it's all about investing in, in their son's education. That's, wow. that's, uh, that's a big thing. So I went to that international school and I was not one of the rich guys. I was I was not one of the cool guys. I found myself in a school with the, some of the richest people in uh, rich families in Egypt, and I wasn't that. So growing up, I always felt that I w- I did not belong. I was an outsider. I was one of the cool kids. I never had a girlfriend in school. I was I was the boyfriend material. Uh, wow. I didn't have enough money to travel to the exotic places that they go every summer. I wasn't that kind of person. So. Uh, and then I went to medical school. Now, medical school in Egypt, very strong medical school, Cairo University, very strong. Yeah. And it's a public school. So you go in, not by money, but you go in with grades. Okay. Oh, wow. So yeah. I, I got the grades. I was unearthed because what else could I do? <laughs> <laughs> so now I go into the public school. Now I am the sissy boy coming from the private school. Ah, both ways oh, you yeah. so <laughs> In private school, you weren't So for seven years, I didn't really have much con- uh, connections oh, no. or friendship in, in, in medical school. I hated medical school. I hated it. But, I, you know, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I had no other choice. So I go in, and now I'm a, I'm a cardiothoracic surgeon. Wow. Uh, uh, I'm a heart surgeon I'm in my residency, and, I, and, I, I'm, and I'm teaching salsa. You're teaching I was, salsa? I, I, I was a salsa teacher. Wait, wow. Yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah. two so different I, I, I'm one of the, uh, the first people who opened salsa classes in Egypt in, 19, uh, two th- in the year 2000, 2001. So I was a, I was a heart surgeon while I'm having like a, a, hus- a side hustle, which is a salsa teacher. So you could dance salsa? Oh, salsa and Argentinian tango. Like, I mean, it's very weird for a heart surgeon to kind of do salsa. So I did it for two years, uh, two reasons. Number one, escape. Yeah, because I, I I needed an outlet, a vent for medical school, and be uh, chicks because you know, like uh, I mean, I mean, like a doctor and a salsa <laughs> and dancer. That's a good that, combination. That, that, that's a chick magnet, baby. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, so like, I'm sorry. Uh, to- uh, 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 <laughs> talking about that, so how how's your love life now? I'm married and I have two kids. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which it was I have, success. I have none. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, yeah. I, I, lo- I love my wife. I love my kids. I have uh, two kids, uh, Nadia and Adam. They're 11 and 6. Uh, Hala, my wife, we're living in Los Angeles. And obviously, you mentioned your upbringing. Is there anything that kind of you reflect on as a childhood that you try and apply to your children now? Um, no, 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 no. I, I raised my children completely different. I, I, I came from a very strict family. My mom was very strict. My mom, my mom was the powerhouse. Yeah. My mom was the strong-headed, very intense, very strong woman, you know. Yeah. Uh, my dad was just like the cool guy. I just <laughs> didn't care. Uh, I am, I'm more like my dad. 
I, yeah. I am uh, uh, my daughter she, Nadia. She's an artist, and uh, we I have we have a good very a very good relationship. I I'm not that I'm I'm not like uh, an an oppressive or a, a hovering or over I'm, and she's she's very well behaved. Yeah, but but uh, it is me. Uh, it's it's like I I want to her and she, and I want her to have this kind of independent, strong personality. Growing up, I don't have want her to feel that she's afraid or she's worried. She can tell me anything if she want. Yeah, or if she doesn't, it's just it's it's up to her. Like it is up it, it is up to the fa- the, the the parents to be receptive and be there for the kids whenever they are ready for them. So you have a daughter and a son, or yes, are you more strict on your son? No, he's six. Oh yeah, you know, <laughs> bro. Yeah, yeah. That's sick. You know they have this stigma of like Arab dads, like they treat their daughters amazing. When it comes to the son, they're like, no, no, <laughs> yeah. no. Actually, actually, uh, but that's the, quite the opposite. A lot of people actually that give uh, f- a lot of freedom to their sons, and they're gonna be much more strict with their daughters. Oh, yeah. Like they let the, the 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 sons go out and do whatever, and then they come to the daughter, and then they restrict them. Yeah. So it's actually the complete opposite of parents. Really? But I don't. I, 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 for them, they, they, I, I will treat them equally. Now you mentioned obviously your upbringing with studies and stuff. Now obviously, you being someone who who studied medicine and didn't do it, is school something that's important for you to tell your children to go to, or like if your daughter or son says, "Hey, I want to drop out," are you okay with that? I don't think they would drop out. I mean, they will have to finish high school, right? And I would love them to have a college degree. But I think, I think what's happening in the world right now, I think the world is changing. Yeah. I think the that the pathways that people used to actually be put their kids on, which is like college and PhD, I think things have been changing right now in the past few years. Of course, as a parent, I would love my daughter to, or my son to go into like a, a, a very big respectful college and have a university degree. But as you can see now, a lot of successful people are in the world, they don't need it. So I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 will, I think I will have to deal with that when it comes. Uh, you have to understand, I am from a, a generation. Yeah. Who didn't have internet yeah. I, 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 w- w- until until only 15 years ago or 16 years ago, we didn't have facebook there's no twitter instagram only 10 12 years ago yeah. TikTok didn't even exist I, until I like, e- like even someone like me that's on social media nowadays it's just another level yeah so yeah. even you you can see that changes imagine if you didn't even have that yeah like we had we had the, the rotatory phone like you know like someone calls you on the phone you don't know who's Calling, it's a mystery every time. Yeah, it's like, oh, who do you forgot to? Like your block is basically putting, <laughs> making, like putting off the, <laughs> disconnecting the phone. It's you. It's I. I have seen the world change so much. Yeah. From no internet, no email, no email, nothing. Into suddenly into high speed five G, TikToks, everything on your phone. The idea of like, I remember two thousand and nine. I had a friend of mine. It's like he was telling me, oh, everybody's gonna watch. Uh, YouTube on their phones. And it's like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. 2009, this is like when we had the Nokia and the Ericsson phones, you know, there, <laughs> that, is, that we didn't imagine this. To have actually, to have your phone is the primary way to watch everything. Now that is something that was mind blogging only, I'm talking about 2009. I'm actually but are you like, do you ever think about like what the impact of social media could have on the future generations? You can already see it. I mean, you can already see that. I mean, you can already see it even in the content creator. Uh, I mean, I don't know what kind of content creators are you, but I mean, as a person, yeah. because I've only seen you a couple of times, but uh, I have seen there's something that happens in with those people. When you're there, they, they, I have to say that some of the things that I have an issue with, they, especially the people who are used to like just produce content, there's something happens to their humanity and their connection with other people. They only see people as just like a source of income or a source of content. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and and it's very disturbing. But it's very disturbing. Yeah. They talk to you and then, then they all of a sudden, if, if I am not going to be in their content, I'm not going to be in their video, I'm not going to generate some sort of an income or money or, or reviews for them, I'm not important for them. Yeah. And this is, uh, and I and I get invited to a lot of people. I mean, I'm kind of like one of the first people who actually, I'm the first one, one of the first people who did like a conversion from a YouTube to a television show. That I would never call myself a content creator because that phase of online was very short and I went into television right away. So I get still get invited and see the young people and I feel worried. I feel worried for a lot of people because their their human interaction, there's something wrong. There's something off. They lose touch with reality. They lose touch and, the, and, and their, their worldview is through a screen. 
yeah. and through clicks and through people and through trolls. So even the way that they speak to you, they don't speak to me as like a normal human being, as a people, people but they, they, they speak to me as a bot. Yeah. So you're an alien. Actually, you I, I, I do understand, especially nowadays, I think even when it comes to streamers, I think streamers are kind of like that next wave. And like a lot of them are like on their phones, like, what's up chat? What's up? Tell me chat. What do you think chat? Like they're always reply to chat. And I actually saw you on a live stream recently. Which and I, like you weren't on the live stream, but I think they kind of just like got you in there. Um, it was, you were in the gym in Miami. Oh yeah. A, a guy called, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Modine and. Yeah. Oh really? I mean, he's a good kid, but like, I don't know. Like it was very, it was very intense. And I said like, dude, Cool down. It just it was the whole idea. It's it, it just there, 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 there. There's some. There should be. I understand the need for clicks and views, but this is being too much, too theatrical, too much. The, the there. It seems that the normal interaction with human beings is not there anymore. I'm sure they're wonderful people, and I don't yeah. want to like pinpoint a certain person. But the idea of like, it's just like I go around and it's just like you have to understand. Like for some, I just turned fifty, by the way. So, so I'm sure for the wow. people like. Wow, yeah, oh, wow. you're gonna die soon. <laughs> you know that interview, it's like, damn, you haven't no, seen no. that Kevin Hart? Yeah, like, yeah I, I, I just turned 50, and I, and, I know, and I know that I sound, I already sound like a very old grumpy man, but like I walk around, I mean, this is like my day, I walk around and I see someone doing a TikTok dance here, someone is doing content here, someone is like speaking to their friends here, <laughs> like, uh, and, like, ah, and then there's just like someone in your face wanting to prank you. What the hell is wrong with you people? Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? It is just like, I think it's too much, and I think, I, I think the desperate need for exposure and for money, and this is why I never made it on Snapchat. I know that's why I never made it on TikTok because this kind of like the consistency and the need to continuously put content, I can't, I need to have a normal life. Yeah. And that's why when people say like, hey, you have to, and there's a lot of money in Snapchat. There's a lot of money in Snapchat. And I tried Snapchat for two days, two yeah. days. And I think I earned $7. <laughs> and, and 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 I said, and I said yeah cool but I, I can't do it yeah I can't just like have the snap and yeah. open the screen for me while I'm pooping while I'm going pissing <laughs> like, look at me like <laughs> it's just like it yeah. is this yeah. whole this this idea like the, 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 like I mean this device yeah is should not be like like it, it, in uh, 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 an inter it, I know it's already an integral part of your life, but your life you should not li live your life through this. This you, is this is crazy. You know and, what I'm saying? And I think it's affecting it, people's connection, much, yeah. and it's affecting. And I'm and I'm I, and I've I had the chance to speak some of these people. There's something, something that is dead in their eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, I, I look at them and they're not looking at me. Maybe they look at me, but they're not looking at me. It's like they're zoned out. Thinking there is something, something else. else. Yeah. There is something else. You know, and it is it is very scary. And I I think and I and that's why it is no wonder a lot of people are, are getting into through depression. A lot of people get into a psychological problem from that because this is not normal. Yeah, this is not normal. And I know that we are already speaking that through someone's screen. Yeah, <laughs> this but is wrong. Uh, but 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 this word, man, like. You have to separate these two words. Do you do you think social media causes a lot of depression? Absolutely, it, it causes a lot of depression. It causes a lot of uh, uh, unrealistic expectations. It causes a lot of jealousy. It causes a lot of uh, um, you being uh, uh, unhappy about yourself. Yeah, because. Yeah. I mean, it's already enough to compare yourself with the, your surroundings. Imagine comparing yourself with the whole world. But a lot of it is also fake. So the people put up a lot of fake stuff. Yeah. Online. So you're already comparing so yourself already with, with, with fake, unattainable real. stuff. Yeah. 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 And uh, and uh, it's just uh, and and the thing is, maybe because again, I lived a huge part of my life not into that world because in, in social media came very late. Social media it came into my life when I'm in the, in, in in my late thirties, beginning of forties. Yeah. So I'm already my my personality has already developed. Yeah. My yeah. life so has you're already lucky established. You didn't but go now you see people who are thirteen and fourteen, and these are like young impressionist people who could be affected by a lot of things. And you put that through a lot. I am worried for them. You know, actually, one thing I'm worried about genuinely, like I think even me being on social media, like obviously, like you said, nowadays it's on the phone. But in the five, the next five years, now you're seeing like these new vision headsets, like from Apple oh, yeah. and stuff. Like I remember when I grew up, I thought the end of the world is coming and they're gonna have us in like little chairs with VR headsets. 
and it's actually happening. But like Wally, remember Wally? When yeah, the people yeah. on, and there's like the fat people on the on the hover bo- uh, the, the hovering yeah. chairs. Yeah. So yeah. actually, nowadays I'm realizing, wait, I'm actually doing what I used to think was going to end the world. Mm-hmm. Like I'm on my phone. My friend just got me a VR headset. I'm like, wait a second. I am becoming what I used to think in my childhood was the end. If that makes sense, like yeah. control and yeah, no, it it is very scary. It's very scary. And I think like I mean, social media was good at the beginning because it 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 has a lot of benefits. I mean, it, it actually it does bring people together. It does bring people that you'll never even imagine it. Like you can be. I met people on social media. And in real life because of social media and sometimes we were like uh, f- like 20 countries apart and we mm. still meet because of social media yeah. it is yeah. it is very interesting and it, it it's just it, uh, i i think it's great it's a great advancement but the thing is it's like everything else now it's i want to change the topic a little bit um i know you're talking about your kids and studying um did they study in america by the way yeah um now obviously nowadays with schools you've seen a lot of schools kind of especially in the American world, are okay with preaching, um, I guess, unethical things, I'd say. Like, like it's okay to be gay or it's okay to be trans. Is that something that worries you? And have you ever kind of gone into a situation? I, I, I think at the end of the day, uh, the kids get their values from home. Yeah. And the, as long as you have like an open uh, channel and open conversation with your kids. And also, like, you cannot really say it is uh, unethical because there are, those people exist. Uh, uh, I, 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 I don't have a problem of anybody showing their orientation, their religion, their thing, because they, uh, whatever you, uh, uh, anytime you can judge people for because of their lifestyle, they can yeah. also, you can be judged because of your lifestyle, because of religion, because of that. What, 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 what worries me is like the, 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 the too much push on it. Yeah, that that is the thing that like, and, and that doesn't happen in my in my kids' school. But the thing is, my daughter knows what what's the meaning of to have different kind of orientation, different kind of needs, different kind of uh, of mindsets, and the idea of living in a secular country that you have people from all different kind of backgrounds, different kind of beliefs, different kinds of orientation, as I said, and everybody is living together happily, uh, and it doesn't worry me because at the end of the day, the world is like that. The world is. Uh, full of people who are diversified who are different so um moving on this is the biggest question of the day okay do you condemn hamas (laughs) (laughs) i condemn any kind of unnecessary violence yes i'd say you're one person that really spoke out for palestine um obviously being a few months into this whole thing um where are you sitting at right now obviously the situation is still going on it's a sad situation but where is your headspace in this whole conflict? Well, I mean, when this started, I think we were in the defensive, kind of like trying to ridicule their their talking points that may basically allowing more innocent people to die. But I think I'm you recently have been more on the de- defensive. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm more on the offensive now. Okay, meaning that even if the war in Gaza stopped today, I will not stop talking because there is much more that Israel is doing more than just like doing what they're doing in Palestine. Yeah. Uh, the fact that they are meddling in American politics, the fact that they are buying politicians, the fact that they are openly, APAC is openly bragging about the candidates that they are financing are winning their primaries and they're penalizing other uh, candidates for speaking against Israel. This is very worrying. Yeah. The fact that a client country that we support as an American with our tax dollars are actually calling the shots for our politicians, this is now, crazy and unacceptable. America at the end of the day is run by people and those people yeah. are politicians. Those people need money to get their elections. Yeah. And un- unfortunately, there's a huge backing up from Israel, not because of the Jewish people in America, it's also because of a lot of the Christian Zionists. A lot of the support that comes to um, uh, to, uh, of, to for Israel doesn't come, uh, come from Jewish people, Jew- uh, Jewish billionaires, but and a lot of Jewish people don't accept what Israel is doing, but it's also coming from a lot of people who are Christian evangelical, who are the Christian Zionists. I don't know if yeah. you read about this, but those are people who are praying for the end of time and praying for Armageddon. Well, no. That you guys don't... I know. I've no, heard no, of not that in that term. depth, but... Um, you know, you, okay, so you need to educate yourself about Christian Zionism. Christian Zionism is a very dangerous ideology, and it is actually something quite new. And it was... Uh, a lot of it... Uh, People should read about something called the Schofield Bible, and shows people should know, know, uh, read about the rapture and the end of days, and uh, and the uh, supposed end of days Armageddon, which basically people are pushing for the second coming of Christ, for the evangelical Christ, or the 
coming of the real Messiah. So they the want Jews. like the world to end? Exactly, and which is crazy. It's crazy that the, the, the whole idea about the Judeo-Christian uh, values, there's nothing called Judeo-Christian values. This is something very new. This was not part of the founding fathers' uh, ideology for America. And it is actually something that has been promoted very recently the last 200 years. Uh, and uh, it is crazy that the Christian Zionists won the second coming of Jesus. And in their ideology, when, that, when Jesus comes, he, all the Jews will either be killed or convert to Christianity. And for the Jewish ideology, when the Messiah comes, everybody will be enslaved by the Jewish people. So it's crazy that like, they both want the same thing, but with two different results. So that's why they're supporting this movement. Yes. You, you really need to read about this. I, yeah. I, I, I think that the younger generation needs to uh, be educated about the, not just a, the, the, a lot of the geopolitical movements in the world, even in the Western world, is actually driven by religion. Which is funny because they've always been told, we in the Middle East, we in the Arab world, we in the Muslims, like, your religion is problematic, your beliefs are a problem, it's very violent. But they are actually, they, their driving force is extreme religions beliefs that is actually very harmful for the unit for the for the planet but you see like how you said not a lot of people are aware like they're not knowledgeable and everything but that's the problem with social media they just put snippets and kids are just consuming those little bits and pieces they're not reading books like before they're not going deep into history but learning. even in social media there are very short snippets in very informative videos about what you're looking for. Yeah. You can you can have all of your timeline about like dance moves, which is fine. But also there's a lot on Twitter mm-hmm. and on TikTok and on social media and on reads that discuss these things. Yeah. Yeah. As a, where do you think I, I mean, yeah. I, I, yeah. I read books, yeah, but, but, uh, but it's not like I'm someone who just like in the, in the library. I also get a lot of my information from internet, for, for, from the internet, from the social media, from YouTube, from all of these snippets. But you have patients and a lot of kids now, they're developing ADHD and they're blaming there's it nothing on called, social... There's nothing called ADHD. This so is just, there's, 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 it's it, like they don't have it, patience it, it, to guys, consume. Guys, I, I, I have to say just like ADHD is just an excuse. It's just a term. It's an excuse yeah. for a shitty behavior. <laughs> it's an excuse for someone who's irresponsible, yeah. an excuse for someone who doesn't want to have the responsibility of yeah. putting their mind to work. Yeah. ADHD, there are criteria for diagnosing of ADHD. Mm. And, there, and there are certain criteria that needs to be fulfilled in order to say that I have ADHD. And, 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 and then basically you have to qualify for having the medication for the ADHD. But not everybody who cannot focus is ADHD. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? It's, this is very important to set, for, even from a yeah. medical point of view. Yeah. All right? Now, a lot of people we'll are actually want to, uh, a, a lot of people can have, it's, it's about what they want from life. They can, they can waste the time away and just like watching short videos or they can be educated about what's happening around the world. And this is something that you cannot push. Uh, I mean, I, this is why I'm, this is part of the reason I come to my, your show. Yeah. I know that a lot of your followers are younger people. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's, I think it is refreshing every now and then that they hear someone who's a little bit older and they can speak to them in different ways. And maybe they will skip it and maybe it was like, this is too boring for me. But I think I, I, I want to be someone who speaks to people all across platforms, all across age groups, because I think it is very important, instead of like me sitting there in my high chair, making fun of young people, it's like, I'll look at you, look and dance for that. No, th- th- I think they are th- they are just living a different uh, uh, youthful life that is different from me, and I want to have the connection with you and talk to them, because I have a lot to learn from them too. Yeah. Now, I had a question. Um, you're mentioning religion. Are you religious yourself? I, I mean, I'm a Muslim. I'm religious. I, 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 I but I, uh, I have a joke about that. I said when people ask me, "Do I, are you religious?" I said like, "Well, if this is God's chosen people, I have my doubts." <laughs> <laughs> um, because I feel like religion is a huge driving force in everything. Like even me, I'm Muslim. Um, I'm not going to say I'm the perfect Muslim. Um, that'd be me lying. But nobody is perfect. Even perfect Muslims who think they're perfect, they have someone that are more extreme than them that will think that they're not Muslim enough. Yeah, and but you, 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 ne- you will never win. You'll never be you will never win, life. and you never satisfy people. And the thing is, people forget the religion is between you and God. And the thing is, that people would li- love the people who talk a lot about God would love to l- play God themselves. Wow, that's such a beautiful thing you said. Religion is between you and God, and I feel people miss that because here's the thing. Um, recently, I saw some content, and it was such hateful content from Muslims. It was like a religious um, speaker, right? But it was hateful towards another religious speaker because they mentioned that boycotting is maybe not the right thing to do. And I was like, okay, I understand the point, but maybe it shouldn't be so hateful if that makes sense. Mm. Now, I want to ask you that question. Obviously, we're talking about the whole situation. 
is boycotting something that you do or do you preach for? I don't preach for anything. I myself do not use many of the of these things even before the boycott. Yeah. Because I'm sorry, like McDonald's or Starbucks. I mean, Starbucks is a, is, a, is 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 a sorry excuse for coffee, and McDonald's is shitty sandwiches. I never, I have, I've never, I don't even consume them. Yeah. Uh, even before that, not because of boycott or anything, because these are really shitty products, <laughs> right? Yeah. And and I don't know why why there is so much hype. Uh, and many of the stuff that's on the list, I don't use it because they're not healthy as much. As, so, I, I, but, but if I have, yeah, if I have a choice, I don't really go. And and I cannot really say that I, I live in America. I pay taxes to the American government that actually uh, supports Israel. So I cannot be hypocritical about it. Yeah. Uh, what I say, if you want to boycott, boycott. If you don't, don't. But this is this 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 is actually gets us to uh, 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 something else. You just mentioned about two people getting into a fight because of boycotting. Yeah. This thing about trying to upstage people, trying to uh, have like some sort of a moral superiority on other people by, by doing stuff or not doing stuff. Like, for example, why don't you speak about Gaza? Why don't you speak about Palestine? I speak about Palestine, but I don't have to shame you for not speaking. Yeah. If I boycott, I don't have to shame everybody else for not boycotting. You do it for you. You do it because you believe in it. But a lot of people do certain things, say certain things as a way in order to feel better and more superior about others, and they just like one uh, one up you. That is that, that, that this this kind of like the comparison, the, the comparison mentality that people come in. That's not uh, useful for anybody. Yeah. No, by the way, I agree that like that's one thing because um, I personally don't speak about religion much um, on my content. Um, as I said, I'm a Muslim. Um, I try my best to be a good person and just do the right things. Uh, but I also don't like this mentality of like certain people, religions hating on each other because you're doing this wrong and you're doing... And I think that's against religion in itself. Isn't religion meant to spread peace? People who, who like to uh, like kind of... Sh- I'm sorry, like people who, who criticize people for not being good Muslims, good Christians, good Jewish people, they have a problem with their own beliefs, yeah. with, their own, with, with their own faith. I mean, you are faithful because you believe in that. You're not faithful so you can see who is who is better or le- or, or less than you. This idea of the comparative mentality that people want to do it like you, you see what he said. You're a horrible Muslim. That means like I'm a better Muslim than you. This is actually what he's saying. Yeah, basically. In other oh yeah, words. and it's funny because judging is actually a sin. So, uh, uh, whether, whether <laughs> is it sin or something very bad? It's <laughs> like you should, because you don't know I, that I person. Mean, fully. Just, this, this whole idea of like going after people because they are not Muslim in the way that I imagine them, or they are really not religious in the way that I think religious people should be, or should, should like, or should act. Uh, it, it, I think it's a way of insecurities, you know? Yeah. And the thing is, this is so 1980s and 1990s. Yeah. This is the stuff that I grew up with, begrudging people and growing. And I, and I, I really. And, and I really wonder how come the, it still exists in the in social media. People, people, people are not afraid of that anymore. People are not going to be blackmailed with that anymore. This idea of like emotional blackmail of telling you that you're not good enough doesn't work with you. Anymore. Yeah. Now here's a little bit of a conspiracy theory I have. Since mm. we're on the topic of Palestine and stuff, now mm. obviously on since we're talking of Palestine, let's talk about conspiracy theories. <laughs> um, no, because obviously I don't. All the the interviews they always say, "Hey, do you condemn Hamas?" The, um, but. Could Hamas be America? You know how 9-11, they had a conspiracy theory that it wasn't... It wasn't I think this conversation doesn't take you anywhere because you'll never know, number one. Number this two, Number them. two. even discussing that, you would actually offend a lot of people in the Palestinian side. Oh, really? Because a lot of people like consider Hamas as the resistance movement. And also, it is also offensive for a lot of people who are trying to have their liberation and then they will find their... Uh, their efforts being m- muddled into conspiracy theory. Like the whole idea about like labeling things, this is cons- like, for example, the whole idea about 9 11, it's an inside job. Does it, it doesn't take you anywhere. Yeah. This kind of conversation doesn't take you anywhere and it actually puts you into like a frame of a, of, of a crazy person. And then when you, when, when you, when you cross that line, nobody's going to listen to you anymore. Like I would rather talk about the stuff that, that is very obvious to you, what Israel is doing to the, the Palestinians, mm-hmm. the injustice. Not just look what Israel does in Gaza, look what Israel is, not even what Israel does in, in the West Bank, what Israel does to the Arab that with, with, with Israeli passport inside Israel. And the fact that like Israel has always been lying to the world, saying like we are a secular democratic state, while they are an apartheid, racist, and oppressive state, this lie has been gone on for so long, and people are like just letting it go by. This is something that is real and it is tangible, and you can talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. You do not need to waste your time and energy 
to 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 pedal into conspiracy see that doesn't take you anywhere no now i've on, seen yeah. a lot of comments obviously they say are you racist to you me yeah not context and, and like specifically towards israel because obviously like no 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 i said let's and you're anti-semitic <laughs> are you, are you, uh, anti-Semitic. you anti-Semitic. listen i have like i have been into like i, I have, i've been very blessed to be in the public eye for yeah. the uh, blessed and cursed and to be in the public eye for the past 13 years and uh, during these 13 years i've been accused of all kinds of things i'm a i'm a secret muslim brotherhood i'm a secret jew i'm a secret mossad agent i'm a secret cia agent oh. i oh. am uh, I, i'm a, i'm a, i'm a mukhabarat operative by the army i have been called all kinds of names and to add anti-semitic to the accusation i'm a freemason you know to add the anti-semitic to this whole thing and a, a, a satanic worshiper even satan himself I'm Satan. So uh, to add this, that is, doesn't really phase me anymore. Doesn't it doesn't make the, also the the this accusation of anti-Semitism has become so empty. It's an empty accusation. It doesn't. It 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 used to freeze the blood in your veins a few years ago, but it doesn't anymore because it's been overused. Yeah, they're calling everybody anti-Semite. Even they call even Jews who stand against Israel anti-Semite. What they want to say, you're anti-Israel, but anti-Semite and and the whole. First of all, like you have uh, Jonathan Glazer, the the Jewish director who uh, the Jewish Israeli director who just won an Oscar for a movie about the Holocaust, uh-huh. and he went in and he said like I refute my Jewishness, I refuse the f- I don't want my my religion to be hijacked by uh, and and the Holocaust to be hijacked by the by the identity like Israel that has actually been using that to kill people. It's an, it was an amazing speech, oh, wow. and he was called an anti semite. Stephen Hessel. Stephen Hessel was a Jew. He was French Jew. He was part of the French Resistance in the yeah. Second World War Two, and he was in Auschwitz. He was in, put in a concentration camp, and he survived. And he went out to co-author the Universal Declaration of Human Rights of the United Nations. Mm. See, you cannot get more Jewish than this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Two years ago, he supported the Palestinian cause and he supported BDS, and he was called an anti-Semite. So this has been just been this empty accusation doesn't mean anything anymore. Yeah. And and and, and the whole idea anti semite. I'm an Arab. I'm a semite myself. People don't understand that. Okay. Semites is an ethnic identity that actually means that you're all could be an Arab, you could be a Jew. It's it's the, there are the three semites which is Arab, Jews and Aramaic. That's basically now, it. Obviously I just want to clear there. Obviously um, because obviously you talk about the whole Israel Palestine thing so much, you're not against Israeli people at all. Like it only like kind of the government to say right what they're doing. No, I, I I guess the Israel as a country and what they do and the people who support that, which seems that like a lot of Israelis unfortunately support that what the, the government is doing. Maybe there is a minority who doesn't support that, which I applaud. But like even if I say if I'm even if I say I'm against Israel, so what? A lot of people say I'm against America. A lot of people say I'm against the UK. A lot of people say I'm against Saudi Arabia, Egypt, UAE. So yeah. what? So what? Why th- Why is this an outlandish, crazy accusation? Why but should be people afraid to be labeled anti-something? I'm anti-Trump and anti-the Biden. I can say whatever I want about the American president and I cannot speak about Israel. This is crazy. And obviously for the ones that I guess are... But here's the thing, okay? I feel like let's say the minority that are not in favor of what their government is doing... Don't you think they're getting a lot of hate, like the Israeli Jewish people? I, I, I think I think if there is anti-Semitism in the world, I think Israel is the source of it, because they have made us so much damage to people, and they made people hate Israel, and because of them, they are associating themselves with Judaism. So uh, a lot of people don't make this distinct, uh, distinction. I ca- I have the I have the uh, I have enough intelligence and I have enough experience to distinguish, but a lot of people don't. Yeah. And I think Israel is the cause of anti-Semitism in the world. Now, in your opinion, is Israel a country? It is. I mean, listen, it, 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 it is a country. Like the whole idea was like, oh, it's not a country. We can just like discuss about that. But like officially, it is a country in the UN. Okay. And the thing is, being a country in the UN puts a lot of responsibility on it. And this is why every time they want to compare Hamas with Israel, it's like don't compare because country Israel is a country while Hamas isn't. You see, that's a big thing. Because they can get Israel the is Israel is a, sign, a signatory of the uh, uh, universal human rights of the uh, declar- uh, universal declaration of human rights. Israel is the uh, is the signatory of the Geneva Convention. It signed all of the war uh, the war laws. So that is why you can hold Israel accountable, and you cannot compare it to Hamas. Okay, uh, my last thing about this topic before we move on: What do you think is the solution right now? Obviously, we're kind of it's too late. 
But what do you think? Well, first of all, you have to stop the killing. And second of all, you if you want peace, peace does not mean the, the cessation of fight. Peace does not mean the cessation of violence. That is just like cessation of violence. That peace means it has to be just. And and there's a there is a lot of problems like the illegal settlements in the West Bank. There's uh, land seizure every the, the the seizing of land, the seizing of houses, the killing of people, uh, p- 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 putting people under an occupied uh, an, 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 uh, for an occupation for seventy five years, the longest occupation in modern history, by the way. And to do that, to do that. You have to the, uh, to continue doing that. There is no peace. Uh, there's a, there's a problem with the land. There's a problem with Palestinian refugees. There's a, there's a huge problem that you need to fix before you talk about peace. But how how do you fix? That? I feel like this is my opinion about just the world in general. I feel like the governments make problems. I don't think any person is born hateful. They're born into a situation. For example, let's say they're born into Palestine, which has now seen Israel bombing them, and now they hate them. So I don't think the people are the problem. I think it's the situations. And vice versa, I think people are born into Israel with what's going on, and then they have their parents kind of preaching them something. And then par- so I feel just that hate is the the reason, but it's not based on the specific people. If that makes sense to you, yes. But I mean, we're not discussing about the social. But how, we're how talking do you about fix the solution. that? Because right now, okay, let's say as much as we think you don't fix that overnight. Yeah, this has been. But okay, this hate has been breeding for for decades, and there's a reason for that kind. But of as hate. much as let's say we think Israel is in the wrong right now, okay, yes, they've um, come and taken the land, the houses. Let's say miraculously they say, okay, you know what, we're wrong. Where do they go? Where do they go now? What do you mean? Talk about the Israelis? Yeah. Again, this is not. This is like a bit much bigger. I'm, I'm, yeah. Uh, first of all, I never said like we should erase Israel. I never said that. Right. And second of all, there's even like the, the people who talk about the people who know much better than me, yeah. much more qualified. There is a, the two state solution where they have two separate things, or like they have this land and that land, or they have a one state solution where everybody lives happily under this with the same equal rights. All right. Uh, it seems that there is a lot of obstacles for both of them, and I think that it's being complicated every day, and it's not be becoming attainable. But again, I mean. Uh, this is we this is me as a, as a human being. This is me. But again, I did I didn't make it get to that bad uh, bad yeah. that bad. So I don't. Re- uh, I only have these kind of theoretical theories. Yeah. But it's not really up to me. Yeah. Now I actually have a few things. Obviously, you're someone that I respect for one reason. No, no one reason. <laughs> Sounds so wrong. But I res- I respect a lot for, for one reason, and that's it. No, no. no. Um, here's for one, one thing. reason, and I'm done. No, no, no. no. I respect okay. you for one reason, but I disrespect you for all kinds of no, no, 99 this, this reasons. Is one thing I, really I have like. one reason to respect you, and 100 not to. No, no, this <laughs> is one thing I love about you. Um, I feel like when the whole conflict started, you saw every single social media person post about it. 90% of them are not anymore, because I guess the hype died. And I think that's a huge problem in itself, because... Uh, I, I saw one of my, my friends posted Iman Gatsi on his point. He was like, a lot of people posting now are not going to care about this in three months. So actually just don't post about it if you're not going to care about the situation. But I feel like you still, you're true to your word, you know? Don't you think that's an issue? People just post about these things like they're trends. Well, listen, when I posted at the beginning, a lot of people said, oh, you're doing it for clouts and clicks. You're just doing this and doing that trend. And yeah. a lot of people who are now t- who told me this, they're, they're not posting anymore. But here's the thing. I don't post to get praise. I don't post to tell people I'm posting. I po- I po- and like I never once went out on, on my shows like, where are the people who told me? Where are you now? I don't. I, 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 because my motivation to posting did not change. I did not post to, again, upstage other people. I do not post to uh, to to feel myself better than other people. I put and a lot of people is like your friend this and this not posting. It's like it's up to him. I yeah. don't care. I, he, here's the problem. Why do I need to look at other people's actions? I have a lot to worry about my own self. Yeah. I worry about my. I have so much on my plate already. I don't have time to look at what other people are doing. Why are you not posting now? Why are you not posting now? Yeah. Whatever. I don't care. I don't care. You see. Yeah. This is this is not this is a non issue. Because again, this is the this is the mentality of the comparative idea of the social yeah. media. I'm doing this. Why are not you doing this? Yeah, like, you said that before, but you're not doing it again. And I'm keeping posting. What about you? I don't care. This is very childish, man. Yeah, yeah. this is very childish. Now, what would you say to the people that said you spoke about it for fame? I don't care. Don't care. I do. That is, I, you you out of not all people, you know that being exposed, have it, exposure comes with a certain tax, which yeah. is people are being gonna be dicks to you. They're gonna be horrible to you, right? Do you experience real life hate? Like, what, have you ever had, never like in real life? Ninety nine point nine 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 percent 
interaction with people, it is wonderful. I maybe have like one or two, maximum three incidents where I have like, you know, like unfortunate or like uncomfortable encounters with people. But thousands of encounters are amazing. Internet and comment section is not real. Exactly. What and a lot of those people who hate you in the comment, if they see you face to face, they're gonna take a selfie with you. They're your fans yeah. when they see you. What's <laughs> what's the worst situation you've dealt in real life? I wouldn't say worst. Uh, I <laughs> when I left Egypt, uh, 2014, and the the first two three years, I was kind of stumbling around, didn't know what to do in America, and I remember I was doing a tour in uh, London, New York, and and Los Angeles, and the ex regime the, and the sorry the regime in Egypt at the time. Uh, sent hecklers to spoil my show. Oh. And they were shouting at me and they were like throwing insults at me on stage. And uh, <laughs> Did you not get security to like kick them out? Nah, I mean, the thing is, if you kick them out, you lose. Uh. So what did you so do? So I, I, it, it, uh, it was basically, they were like talking shit to me and talking shit back. You just and and just that, that, that was a kind of a different show. <laughs> you just kept the oh guy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, I want to move on to some light questions. If you could have a conversation with one person, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Who did it, would it be and alive? Right? Mm. I, I, I got asked this question before and I didn't, know. I, I didn't know. I don't know. There's, I don't know. Or maybe someone you'd like to meet. I, John F. Kennedy. Really? Mm. Mm. Okay. What's one unpopular opinion you hold? One unpopular opinion, I hope. Ooh. I think whatever I said about social media <laughs> <laughs> in, I, I, in, this, in this episode. <laughs> okay, now this is a, a I guess, a, a self-reflection uh, type of questions I have. Uh, don't take them the wrong way. These are just questions I've seen. Okay, do you have anger issues? I have anxiety issues. And I used to have, not anger issues, I used to be, um, I, think, uh, I think when you say anger issue, anger issue is very serious. You can actually be very destructive. Okay. But I used to have very short temper. Uh, one of the things that I regret in the past that when I had my show, I was under a lot of press uh, pressure. So I would have like these like short bursts of explosions, like if things were not going wrong, because like, you know, we have like a live show, it's very stressful. stressful. And I would, if I would go back, I would change that. I would be more calm. And now I'm kind of like calmer than the people. Are, I'm trying to be nicer with the people around me, not to uh, to make them and, and kind of deal with the anxiety. Yeah. Because anxiety and where does anxiety and anger come from? Feel of fear. You're afraid of failure, and if you if you build something big, you're always worried that like one single mistake would make it all crumble. Is, is that a fear you have? Like, are you scared to fail? Oh, all the time. But why? Why does it matter so much to you? Yeah, well, you know, it's human nature. It's uh, the fact that, and the, and the more success you attain, the more the more that you have to fear to lose. But I feel like okay, I know this is crazy to say. I feel like a lot of successful people have a certain trauma that was there, maybe from childhood from relationships that kind of led them to just not giving up, you know, or, or, or having something to prove. Is there any moment in your life that... No, it's not that... I, I think, like, my, because my mom was very strict with me and studying everything, so I have to be the best. I have to do something. It's, it's kind of the perfectionist mood, the AKI personality. It is it is useful. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a very big driving force. It's the fire under you that keeps you going, but yeah. it comes with a lot of anxiety and a lot of and, and a lot of angst and a lot of uh, uh, tension. What's your relationship like with your mom now? No, they're, they're both of them like they're in heaven. So, oh, sorry uh, to hear that. Sorry so, to hear that. No, that, that's, uh, that was ten years ago. Don't worry. So, uh, but uh, you know, it's uh, yeah. It's, uh, when when they were alive, they were like kind of like they were kind of like the yin and the yang. My mom and dad. Oh, it was very interesting. That's beautiful to hear. Um, moving on. This is a don't hate me for this question. It's not me. Would you say you are a narcissist? Would I say would I a narcissist? A narcissist would never admit they're a narcissist. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> so I can say no, and you don't have to believe me. <laughs> Uh, Are you I, know, I, I think I think each one of us has a sense of a self of of uh, a sense of self. But I think a narcissist is someone that really hurts other people. Mm. A narcissist. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all of us. You can have. We have different kind of self awareness that could range from confidence, hyper confidence, to straight off being arrogant. But a narcissist meaning that. You have everything. Uh, it's. I think it is when you tell like people that narcissist. No, narcissist is a kind of psychopathy that I think it eventually means that you you hurt people around you because of your inflated ego. Yeah. Mm. You can have an inflated ego about yourself, but you don't hurt people. I don't think that qualifies as a narcissist, really, or but someone who uh, they have a disregard of people's 
uh, feelings and people's life and they have absolutely lack uh, like absolutely a whole lack of empathy so i think that is the true thing and i don't think i i, I fit that criteria as a matter of fact i care too much about people around me and i worry about them yeah. uh, having a bad impression or feeling bad because of me a okay. question how do you spot a narcissist like what are some of the Close. Well, there, there is. Uh, I mean, it. Uh, it is. It is. I think it's more difficult than you think. Uh, the, the, um, because the more uh, seasoned the narcissist is, the better they are than hiding it. But I think well, one of them is everything. They always have to be the main characters of everyone's story. Everything they all have to be the center of attention. They, uh, they don't have any regard of your feelings, and they. Uh, they 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 project what they do in their what they have abo- over you. So, for example, they they will accuse you uh, of all kind of things, but these kind of things are they are actually doing. Yeah. yeah. You know, they uh, so it is very uh, and they're very abrasive and they they're hurtful and they never apologize and they uh, never uh, hold themselves accountable for the things they do to other people. Yeah. So I think an, being a narcissist is more of an act of what you do to others more than anything. Um, the next question: mm-hmm. Have have you invested in crypto? Uh, I had a little bit of money that I put in crypto uh, like a couple of years ago, and I forgot about them, and I don't even look at them. That is like me. <laughs> did, did you? Is it a Bitcoin? No, 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 no. no. Like, I mean, it's 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 a it's a mixture. Same. Yeah. I, I did it like what called Coinbase or something, one of these yeah. platforms. It's just like a small amount of money. It's not huge, and just yeah. like put it there, and I don't even want to look at. Don't the, tell me you, all, you forgot. By your way, password Bitcoin is, I, I don't know if you do. You know the price of Bitcoin right now? No. I mean, hopefully you bought a Bitcoin, but it's right now it's like seventy two thousand dollars for one Bitcoin. Oh wow! You should go and check. You should wallet. check your wallet. You might you might be a hidden millionaire. Yeah, <laughs> no, not a millionaire. I don't. I didn't buy that much. I mean, just how early did you buy your Bitcoin? No, not early. Not early at all. No, I did it when they were like in the forties and fifties. Okay, so you're still up. He's checking his crypto wallet right oh now. Oh my god! It's uh, my wallet is up by fifty percent. Wow! Wow! Crypto, damn. Huh? Yeah, baby. Let's nice. go. Let's go, baby. <laughs> but is it Bitcoin or is it other? Uh, no, it's 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 a mixture. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, wow, that, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, here, okay. Just random. These are not me. I just just putting it for the audience. Now, what's the worst social media person you've seen that you think is a fake person? I'm sure you've seen a lot of them. Is there anyone that like in your head is like this is a fake dun. person? <laughs> this is getting hot. Michael Rappaport. Yeah, he's the American actor who just like goes. He strolls. He's is he an he's, actor? I thought I just yeah, see him on Instagram. He's, he's, he's like a comedian, but he's washed out, and he he goes in and he just like troll people, and he's yeah. like yeah, he, he's a, he, he's like a, a sorry Zionist. Now, if you had twenty four hours to live, mm. what would you do in your last? Spend, spend it with my kids and my my family, my wife. Yeah, you wouldn't do any like intrusive thought things, <laughs> like you know. <laughs> Nothing crazy. I always think about that, you know. No, you're thinking about doing that for the gram. You think about doing that for the social media. Yeah. You think about doing that. You you have to stop thinking about doing stuff for other people and doing it for yourself. And the best play. And 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 if if I ask you the question, and your answer to be anything other than spending it with the people you love, there's something wrong with you. Okay, if you could have both options, obviously, like yes, you have it with your family. What would like your intrusive thoughts be like? What would one crazy thing? You, you know, as like a child, you say like, I know this sounds so wrong. Like, I'd go around and like murder everyone. No, okay, not murder. <laughs> Why? Everyone. Like, what is that? No, not murder, but like do just I don't know, jump off buildings. Um, are or, you my brother? Or rob a car? You know, like I mean, not to say would ever do it. You know, I don't know. It's just like you know, as a kid, do you not have those intrusive thoughts with your friends? No. Here's the thing, and I know that I'm again. I sound like a very old grumpy man. The older yeah. you get. The more the the more stability and peace you want in your life, and the and the whole crazy ideas. I wish I do this and do this. Like actually, we grow up. Like I, when you grow up, and as a matter of fact, you. How old are you? Me, yeah, I'm 29 now. You're 29. How old are you? Old enough. <laughs> yeah. okay. 29 and old enough. Yeah. So we, we, we you have you have at the age of 29. Yeah. You are already more exposed to many things more than I am ever when I was 29. I didn't get exposed because also like I didn't have the internet, I didn't have the experience, I didn't have the exposure, I have the I didn't have the luxury to travel. You already at the, at your 20s and people they, in their teens have already done so much that my generation didn't do. Maybe even later in their 30s or 40s. No. So even with that, even with that, me not doing anything, and when you grow older in life, you're 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 actually hardly impressed by anything anymore. Yeah. Imagine you with all of that exposure, 
you after five years, six years, seven years, you will actually reach, you will be more matured at the age of 35 than I was mature in the age of 45. Oh, yeah. So, the, uh, uh, and I know, like, so I, I, I know that we always like, you know, make fun of younger people, whatever, but everything, all the crazy things that they're doing right now, they will make them mature and get older much faster than they ever think. Yeah. So the more that you do in your life, the less that you want to do crazy outlandish things. Yeah. You will actually more be, it, it's gonna, you're gonna internalize a lot of things. You're gonna be more in peace with yourself. Yeah. You actually wanna actually do less. Now, yeah. you seem like, obviously I would say like, I see you as like someone that's very wise and you have like a lot of good views like generically. What would your advice be to, or what would, what relationship advice would you give to the younger generation? I can't because their inputs are different than mine. Because I can, how can I advise people whom I have never lived their life? You know, I don't know, I don't know what their life is like. Uh, I, the only advice that I can give, which is a very generic advice, is to be kind. And this is like a, a it's like a no-brainer advice. To be kind to the people around you. Be, 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 be kind to the people who even try to hurt you, because that's the only thing that stays. No, I meant like relationship advice, where like, you know, now- Be kind. Be kind. Be kind. Yeah. Even relationship, be kind to the to your partner, be kind to the someone you love, be kind to people around me, you know? Yeah. Not Ki everyone's ki kind. No. Ki kindness, kindness goes a long way and it's a, it's a, it's a very underrated quality. Okay, weird be question. Have you ever been cheated on in a relationship? Cheated on, but no, I mean, I, 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 I don't think I have, maybe, maybe I, I was and I, I never okay. knew how I know, I don't know. <laughs> I think that's just something a lot of kids nowadays, I guess, face and they all talk about, you know, yeah. um, how to get over that, but. Yeah. Well, I think maybe that's another advice. Don't put too, too much faith in humans. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put too much faith in humanity. Don't put too much faith in humanity. Don't put too much faith in individuals. And at the end of the day, just be like, and, and I think the biggest thing that I would say that can be linked to the idea of too much faith, don't try to seek too much validations from others. Yeah. Because that's a huge thing in today's today's generations, like the younger generations, and even like in all kinds of generations, but also social media is like that. Because what is social media? It's about validation, likes and shares, and yeah, yeah. they yeah. like me, they like me, like me, like me, like me, like me, clips, clips, clips. that's yeah. kind of validation, right? Yeah. And in real life, you always need the validation. You are you need to have that validation that, that, that comes from, and I know it sounds so cliche, self-love, right? But it's actually quite real. If you have, enough respect, enough uh, love yourself, you are not going to be a victim or a target or a prey for people who feed and prey on those on, on your kind of people that need that kind of validation. Because okay. narcissists do that. They see that kind of weakness and they attack from there. Yeah, I think and, they, 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 and they make you hooked to that kind of validation. And then they, get, they love bomb you at the beginning. They love, 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 love. And then yeah. pff, they take it back. So it's like a drug. Yeah. Now they're like your drug dealer and they want it and then they just give you a little bit and they take you back. So you become a slave for that validation. Never do that. And also my last advice, since I'm not giving advice is, is everything is temporary. The hurt is temporary. The pain is temporary. The sadness is temporary. The, the feeling that you get because someone cheated upon you is temporary. The, fail, the, the failure is temporary, right? Yeah, I think the anger is temporary. The sadness is temporary. Everything's, even the success is temporary. Everything in this life is temporary. Yeah, this too shall pass. Okay, now quick random question. This can be quick answers. Does money make you happy? Of course. I like that. Yes. Yeah. Money is a mean to make things. I mean, if, if I said no, I would, be, I would be lying to you. But it doesn't make, but, but the, the, the question, is because the, it does money buy, get you everything or the, does money buy you happiness? That's a, that, the way that is, that the, the question is asked is, is misleading. Money the, buy its, like uh, money buys you happiness. But if you're missing other stuff, happiness will not be attained. If you have all the money in the world and you're not healthy, If you have all the money in the world and you're hated, and I love, and you have all the money in the world, if that, so money is important and important money makes you happy. But if you have other stuff, like you know, you you need to have like a, a kind of a a bit of everything in order to be happy. Yeah, I think someone like I so I like the honesty by the way, and I think I saw someone else say this like yes, like I can use this money to surprise my mom with something or buy my kids something, you know. Is that like kind of how I can buy I, the fact that you have money that you don't need to depend on other people? That in itself is happiness. And the, the, the idea that like you're not uh, into a financial uh, crunch that that you don't need anyone that is in itself is happiness. And is it like is a sprout for like do you get happy like for example when you 
is what's things that make you happy like surprising your kids or your wife with something uh, when, uh, when i'm around my kids i'm the happiest uh, when i'm doing this thing that i love like even working out in the gym that makes me happy yeah. when i feel when i feel like i'm i'm taking care of my body when i feel that like i'm in a, in a beautiful place i'm happy when i feel that i'm around people that love me yeah. that's uh, happy but the happiest also like when i'm on stage and i'm doing a good show and uh-huh. people in uh, people uh, you know connect with me on stage which by my way i have a huge show in the as arena in 24th of May, Le- come to my show. Let's mention it right Abu now. Abu Dhabi Comedy Festival, baby. Guys, so in case you didn't know, Basim is doing a show. We'll leave all the details in the description. It's in Abu Dhabi. And I'm excited to have you here. Like, when's the last time you've been here? Oh, well, I, I, just like a little last month. <laughs> well, the show is coming. No, 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 but the show, the, 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 this is actually going to be the biggest show of my life because wow. are, the arena, the S arena starts at 5,000 seats. Uh, the biggest that ever performed in front was like 3,000. Wow. So that's huge. It's the biggest show in the region. In wow. my life. Wow. So guys, listen, it's going to sell out quick. All the links are in the description. Do not miss this show. Oh my I mean, I don't know that when's the next time you're going to be back. It's probably mm. not going to be very <laughs> soon. Uh, it's, a, it's actually part of a Middle Eastern tour. I'm going to do Amman in Jordan, uh, Muscat Oman and Kuwait together. With can, I, can I come to the show? Of course. Can I carry you? You are can, invited, can, man. Guys, I'm gonna be there, like, uh, but just don't bully me, because I know mm, you, no. like, you know, like, mm, just no, not gonna bully you. If I'm gonna put you in the nosebleed, so I don't see yeah. you. <laughs> uh, this is kind of a sad question, but it's a question I like to ask. What would your last words be before death? What's my last word to be? The, what? What would you yeah. want it to be? That I think that was like, why would it matter? <laughs> I mean, maybe. If Why you would could, it matter? If you could spread like a message to no. people, and maybe they. I, th- I think we give too much credit to ourselves as human beings saying that, like, whatever we say or do will make a, a difference. It's, it's, we're, we're, what, we're, we're too small and we're too insignificant. What if, what if it matters just a little bit? We're too insignificant. Don't think we're, do th- with, uh, we, we're not that important. Really? We're not, seriously. Well, this is the problem with a human ego. Humans think that we are, we, we are something, but we're not. We're like little pieces of shit. We're just like turds. And we're like little pieces of shit, shitting little pieces of shit, but don't, ending don't, up in shit. Don't you think like some of the, like you said, the, like some big people in the past have made impacts in the world? Yeah, but I don't think they waited until the two seconds before they die. <laughs> 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 well, theoretically, well. That's like a weird question, dude. Yeah, yeah bro, can we go to That's a weird next? question, dude. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> All right, know. okay, I'll give it to you. Be kind. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> That's your last word. Yeah, yes. Um, or fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. By the way, I always had this question: How does it work being a comedian? Like, how do you like? How do you practice? Like, you know, like I, I kind of was watching before. You practice the same way that you practice in the gym. We start with small weight, and you increase the weight incrementally. You start with small rooms, small comedy clubs. You try your material, and then it gets bigger, 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 and bigger. And uh, now that they have like a, 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 a developed hour, so if you see my schedule, like I'm in London, then Paris, then Syros, then Malmo, then, then Stockholm, then Oslo, every single day I wake up, I jump on a plane, I land, I check in an hotel, sound check, do the show, sometimes two shows in one night, come back, sleep, wake up, go to the plane, travel to another city, it's crazy. Are you ever scared to say certain jokes? Like, what's the worst joke you've ever said that might have been too racist? And No, I don't, I, I don't because you have to understand, my uh, my life my my time in stand up comedy is very short. Yeah, I don't have that kind of gravitas and that kind of like courage to kind of like go into the thing because I'm still trying. I'm, I, you know, Seinfeld once said like, it's how much you spend in comedy is, is your comedy age. So if you're five years into comedy, you're five years old. You're an infant. Yeah, you know. So I'm I'm still an infant. I'm five six years old. I'm still a child in stand up comedy, especially. So uh, I I'm not really at that stage that people who have been doing it for 30, 40 years they're different. Now my final questions is you're talking like a lot about like the world and how it works. Do you believe in the Illuminati? Illuminati? Yeah, Freemasons, Illuminati. I, I don't know, man. I I don't think so. I I, I just I, I don't know. I I the whole idea that you want to uh, explain the word problems by a bunch of people sitting in a closed ro- in a closed door behind closed doors and and plotting. I, I I don't find it very plausible, and yet I might be wrong. What about like the Matrix? Because you're mentioning about the like, Matrix. Like you're mentioning about how like they had in Rome Colosseum. The Colosseum. Oh, the Colosseum. But I guess the Colosseum. The whole like idea of that was to distract the public of 
what's happening. Yeah, but the distraction is going there, like with the arts and the sports and everything. The distraction is there. It's always there. I mean, that itself is like, I mean, yeah, but I, I, I don't know if that is by design or is it just like by, by the fact that, you know, that's capitalism and that actually m makes a lot of money to people. I mean, a lot of things that you think it's conspiracy, maybe it just like it comes from the fact that it's really very profitable to people. And, 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 and here's the thing: a lot of there is a lot of frustration over what th whatever happened in the world. So when you fail about explaining it, you all got, cause you come to the conspiracy theories, and I don't like to meddle into that. Yeah, because you one, once you subscribe to that, yeah, it 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 discredits you in many of the mainstream media while discussing important. Question. Because you're so for, like so, for example, so for example, as you said in the beginning, it's like, oh, you're the face of the Palestinian code, whatever. If I start to talk about that and subscribe to that, that will discredit me talking about anything. Yeah, you know, I would rather speak about uh, 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 speak about it in a in a in a in a logical, uh, informative, nuanced way, other than just like trying to subscribe to a conspiracy theory because this is where you sh people will be shut down from you. Because I guess this way you're kind of saying like, I don't know what's going on, right? I, I, I would I, I wouldn't there's a lot of stuff that we can discuss over the surface that we don't need to go delve into the yeah. the underlying of the belly of the beast and try yeah. to explain it with conspiracy there is stuff that is there like for example like we talked about like the the control of, of Israeli of the American politics it's money it's really money it's yeah, not it's really just, conspiracy it's just like very it's very, it's very easy yeah it's very easy and there are other people who think about like crazy uh, religious uh, yeah. ideas that want to do it no matter what you don't need a conspiracy to prove that you know and actually one thing obviously um, you know like people like Andrew Tate when they preach this matrix thing do you think they're doing it because they know something or I have no idea and I think it's just it's a rabbit hole there's no and, and I think it's just like a waste of time it's I mean it's it's fine I mean they, they can discuss whatever they want but I, I don't want to waste my time and energy in discussing that because a you'll never you're never gonna get an answer yeah. it's like are there aliens I think they are, <laughs> but we don't have proof. So we can discuss from here till the uh, kingdom yeah. comes yeah. and we'll never know the answer. I would rather discuss stuff that like, hopefully we can get and at the, to the to the bottom of it without actually wasting our time and think that you'll never get an answer. Yeah, maybe it's a more pragmatic, a pragmatic way to discuss things. What is your opinion on people like Andrew Tate and what they spread? I mean, it's 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 a, it's a very problematic character. Uh, the whole idea about him, about what he did to women, and how they brag about like how he. I mean, uh, a lot of people say, "Oh, he's he's been framed for accusations." Forget about the accusations. The way that he speaks about women is very mis mis uh, misogynic, and it's very disrespectful. And I and I and I, I cannot I cannot subscribe or, or or support that. I feel like even if if he sometimes have the same point of view about certain things as you, but good for him. But I, I, I don't subscribe with many of the things that he stands for. Here's the thing. I, I Look, I met the guy. I think personally they, they know saying certain things will just grab the attention of people. Even if it might be not 100% true. Whatever, even if that's the case, he knows that when he say that, he will be judged based on that. So if, he wa if that's the kind of personality that you want to project, it is going to be on him if people think that about him. Thank you so much uh, for coming on the show. If you have any last words you'd like to give to the people watching. Come to my show! Come to the show, yes, guys. Yes, Arena. Yes, Island Arena, 24th of May. Me and Maz Jubrani, the biggest show in Abu Dhabi Comedy Festival. Guys, I'm going to hopefully be... Uh, we I, will. If you, let, if you don't let me in, I'll be very sad. No, man, dude, you, you are my guest to move logs. Guys, I'm Mo gonna... is going to be in the first row with his sister, and I'm going to take the, the piss out of them. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs>